Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about why the latest updates to macOS and Dolphin make the M1 Apple Silicon Mac the best platform to emulate Wii and GameCube games on. Not only is Dolphin optimized for the ARM chip, it also has a brand new metal renderer which is going to be much faster than the previous Molten VK implementation. And furthermore, recent updates to macOS Ventura as well as Dolphin now allow for full Joy-Con support with emulated Wii controls. So today I'm going to show you how how to install the dev version of Dolphin and get all of this new Joy-Con support working on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac tutorials. So at the time of recording, macOS Ventura is still in a beta, but it's pretty much safe to download now. If you want to find out how to do this, then make sure to click on the link in the description for my tutorial video on how to get the developer beta. If you're watching this in the future, then macOS Ventura might have a full release. So all you need to do is to do a system update to get macOS Ventura working. So once we're on macOS Ventura, we're going to go to the dolphin-mu.org website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And once we're here, we're going to go ahead and press the download button. So when we get to the download page, we're going to be met with the beta versions at the top. And what we're going to find is that the top of the list is going to contain the latest beta version, which is going to have some amount of testing done on it. However, at the time of recording, these don't have the features that we want to use. So therefore, we're going to scroll down and use the nightly development version instead. So some of the features that we're talking about, for example, Metal and Joy-Con support are going to be integrated into the beta at some point in the future. However, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be using the one at the top here, which is the latest nightly build. And we're going to to download this ARM Intel Universal Binary. So this contains the Rosetta 2 build as well as the build that's going to be optimized for M1 and M2 Max. So we're going to click on this button here and that's going to start the download here. And once that download is finished, we're going to go to Finder and we're going to go to Downloads and then we're going to double click on Dolphin Master Universal.dmg. So once we have that open, we're going to select both of these items and they're going to drag and drop them into our applications folder and then let go. So within applications, we're going to scroll down and we're going to find Dolphin and then double click. Here we'll press open and now we have Dolphin open here. So the next step is going to be finding GameCube or Wii games. So the simplest way to do this is to get a Wii and then load a custom firmware onto it and then dump your legitimate games on it. You're going to find plenty of guides for this online. Alternatively, if you do a Google search for the name of the game with the word Wii and ISO, you're going to find plenty of places to download various backups. Just be careful about downloading files from random websites on the internet to make sure that you download from a trustworthy source. So once we're in Dolphin, we can double click on this section here and we're going to go and find our Wii GameCube ISO folder. So I've got one here, I'm going to press open and then that's going to load up all of the various Wii GameCube games. So now I have all of my games listed here, it's time to move on to the next step. So what I'm going to do now is to pair up my Joy-Con controllers from my Nintendo Switch and both macOS Ventura and Dolphin both contain much better support for these controllers. So I'm just going to show you how to set this up. So firstly in macOS Ventura, what we're going to do is to click on the Apple logo and go to System Settings things. And then we're going to click on the Bluetooth icon and we have no Bluetooth devices attached. So within the Joy-Con, I'm going to press the sync button here. And this right Joy-Con has now appeared in the list of devices. I'm going to press connect. And that right Joy-Con is now connected to the Mac. I'm also going to connect up my left Joy-Con here by holding down the sync button. And then this left Joy-Con has appeared on this list. So I'm going to press connect. And then that button's going to stay solid and both devices are connected. So what's cool about macOS and Ventura is you can scroll down on the system preferences and go to game controllers. And you can see here we have Joy-Con left and right attached to this computer. And you can go ahead and have a profile for this. So you can remap some of the settings if you like. You can change the direction of the analog sticks and what the buttons do. So once your Joy-Cons are connected, we're gonna close this and then we're gonna to go to Dolphin. And then I'm gonna click the controller button here. So I'm gonna demonstrate how the Joy-Cons can also emulate a real Wii remote controller. So I'm going to change the Wii Remote 1 to Emulated Wii Remote and then press Configure. And then under this Devices list, you're going to see that we have the ability to map the left Joy-Con, the right Joy-Con, or as a new SDL device, which is a combined Nintendo Switch left and right Joy-Con here. So as you can see, as I'm rotating and moving the Joy-Con, the accelerometer and the gyroscope are both accepting inputs. So this right-hand Joy-Con is going to be emulating the Wii Remote Control and the left-hand side is going to be acting as the nunchuck. So the first thing that I recommend doing is to save this profile. So I'm going to call this one Joy-Cons and press save. So that means that anything that we change is going to be saved into this profile. The next thing is that we're going to configure our nunchuck. So I'm going to use the left Joy-Con to do that. Once this is enabled, then we have this extension tab here, which becomes enabled. Then I'm just going to remap this controller. So I'm going to select up like this, down like this, left, right. And then I'm going to make this the Z and this into C. And you can see we have the analog stick working as well. Next, we're going to do the Wiimote controller. So here I'm going to change A to A, B to B, button one to the X key, 
button 2 to Y. I'm changing the minus key to the minus on the left nunchuck. We're going to change minus to the minus key on the left Joy-Con and plus key here. Home key, we're going to use the home button here. Change the home key to here, but there is going to be a little bit of conflict with the macOS implementation of the home button. So just be aware of that. And also what you should do is to change the D-pad settings too. So I normally would put this onto the left Joy-Con because the right face buttons here are all used up. So here I'm gonna press up for button 11, down, left and right. So that's gonna simulate the D-pad on the main Wiimote. Then I'm gonna press the save button and then close. So the other interesting setting is gonna be in graphics. So now for the very first time, we have the option to use the metal renderer, which is gonna offer substantially better performance on Apple Silicon Macs. If you select Vulkan, then it's gonna be using a molten VK translation layer. However, Metal is the renderer which is going to work best for most games on Mac. I'm also going to turn on Show FPS. And then in terms of enhancements, what I normally recommend that you do is to switch it to at least three times the native resolution so we get close to 1080p. That works great on MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, etc. So here we're going to try our game. We're going to play Wii Sports. And as you can see, with just the pointer, I am using this kind of emulated Wiimote control, but it actually works pretty well, to be honest. I'm going to press the NB button to get into the menu. I'm going to show you what one of the games might be like. So you are going to run into some games which don't like the nunchuck attached. For example, if we want to play tennis, it's going to ask us to unplug the nunchuck. All we have to do is to go back into controller settings, configure our remote, and then disable the extension, disable the nunchuck, and then the game will allow us to load up and we can play this game. So out of the box, the Joy Con Wemo emulation experience is actually pretty good. Wii Sports Tennis is definitely very playable. And one of the main advantages of using Joy Cons is the fact that we don't need the Wii Mode sensor bar and therefore we can sit much closer to say a MacBook screen and get much closer to the game. The Joy-Cons also work great for games like Wii Sports Bowling and there's enough space to do the full Wiimote emulated motion on the Joy-Con really close to the MacBook without hitting the screen. And if you're worried about pointer accuracy, as far as I can tell, this feels pretty accurate. It's not exactly the same as a Wiimote, but it's very, very close. It's definitely enough to quickly point and type on a screen accurately and quickly. When you're pointing and shooting in a game like Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, you do feel a slight amount of lag, but I think that this is pretty much very close to what a Wiimote would perform like. So as far as I can tell, the only thing that's actually missing is motion controls on the left nunchuck. I'm sure that this is going to get patched in eventually as we're still working with nightly dolphin builds and hopefully this is going to come to the next release in the very near future. So lastly we're going to be looking at the brand new metal renderer. So this is going to be a huge improvement over the old Vulcan Molten VK implementation. Here we're running Super Mario Galaxy at 4k. Here we're seeing a performance boost of approximately 50% so that raises the frame rate from around 35 to 40 to 55 to 60 frames per second and it just goes to show how much performance can be achieved by games if they take advantage of Apple Silicon and hardware and graphics APIs. So anyway, Dolphin on the Apple Silicon Mac is probably one of the best game emulators out there for the hardware. I'll be covering future Dolphin updates in the very near future. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.